Hi, this is Chuck Wolf, and welcome to this episode of Place Parts. We're continuing with the theme of the last episode, and that is the relationship between nature and the city. In particular, here in the village of Donington in West Berkshire, perhaps more correctly stated as the relationship between the River Lamburn and a village. But we won't be just in England for this episode. In a moment, we'll travel to the mouth of the Murray River, south of Adelaide in Australia, to speak with Trish Hansen about place and the role of indigenous peoples in understanding place. So in the last episode, and in fact, the introduction to this episode, I've been emphasizing the interface between nature and the built environment, particularly the riverine environment here in West Berkshire in, um, in England. But Trish Hansen is not in England. She is not even in her hometown, so to speak, of Adelaide in South Australia. Where are you? You're, you're, uh, you're at the beach. You're, you're, I'm at you're, the beach at the mouth of the Murray River, which is one of Australia's most significant rivers. So I'm uh, on Narangeti country. And of course, I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and thank them for their care and nurturing of this land and these waters, which are quite remarkable. Trish, you and I have reconnected through the wonders of social media lately. We sort of overlapped in Adelaide uh, with the Open State event in um, the fall of 2017, I believe it was. But I, I think, as sometimes actually happens on social media, we have a, a shared interest in a, in a more subtle approach to place. And um, as I've uh, gone on writing a third book now, I've focused on a far more expansive way of interpreting place, which is way beyond the physical environment and way beyond the built environment. Um, you have a little company, not to not to be diminutive in the least, but you have a company called Urban Urban Mind Studio, right? And mm. I've been fascinated with your outright statement that you like to bridge abstract ideas and uh, do as they would say here in England, really, really have quite a think uh, about how all this fits together, which is um, about where I am too, I think. And you're doing that right now because I can see papers on the table behind you. <laughs> oh, you're, yes. you're, yeah. you're, you're doing a project. Yeah, so doing a project um, where I've been engaged uh, by a municipality to develop an arts and cultural strategy which is really acknowledging uh, council's role in uh, their custodial role in the creative and cultural life of the place. So if we think of the wisdom that First Nations people around the world tell us about place exists, it's uh, not something we make, even though in uh, new urban environments and um, uh, 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 the contemporary life, we do have the responsibility to shape our places. Uh, if we think about the ecological and cultural assets and essence of a place that already exists when we go somewhere, when, we're, when we are in any place in the world, um, honouring that through the process of uh, moving forward and creating what's new and what the future is, um, allows us to be in service to that, which is inherently sustainable. So if we are in all of our actions uh, in service to the creative and cultural life of the place, the ecology of the place, it's inherently sustainable. So- um, I, I hear my favorite word, which is I think one of your favorite words too, context. Yeah, context. <laughs> that, that makes tremendous sense, especially not so much where you are, but I think people have had the rug pulled out from under them in terms of how they relate to where they live and work. And as many people are saying, um, as we reinvent, it's a whole new opportunity to, to reference the kind of deep thinking that, that, that you just 
related. And um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you've developed a tool or two that sound to me like they're far more elegant than the, the verbal ones that I've tried to develop. Um, you don't have to nod on that one, but, but uh, so are you putting your tools to use in this project? Yes. So, and how? Yeah. I mean, co culture is complex, isn't it? If we think about um, culture as um, of what uh, we value and how we make meaning and how we make sense of, of the world, including things like values and belonging and interaction and, um, uh, the vibe of the place where arts is expression of just about anything but it's all about expression so when a municipality comes to realize its responsibility in shaping the creative and cultural life of the future of the place it's a such a complex deliciously complex concept that for someone to understand that who doesn't have an arts and cultural background is um, quite a challenge. So one of the tools I've developed is um, based on work that I've done with other municipalities here and a group called the Creative Communities Network. Um, it's been inspired by that and I've built on that, um, which is a simple tool where um, municipalities can consider the impact of any decision on culture. And so I use that as really a tool to honour that it is a complex uh, concept and not everybody has a background in arts and culture, thankfully. They come from many, many different yeah. Yeah. Um, disciplines and thinkings. So this is a way to really provoke and ask questions. So if we consider that, that questions are the invitations to conversations and that the conversations are the invitations to the future, that's where we start to get some really interesting dialogue happening. Well, that's, I think, a different point of view than a wide range of people who've wrapped around the, the place-making term, because as you pointed out, at least implicitly in what you just said and in our earlier chat, maybe it's not your job to make anything. I mean, you're far more inductive, it sounds like. Um, you, I think you told me you're spending 15 months on this project, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, that, that doesn't mean that you're around that table for two meetings with the stakeholders. It means something far more. Oh, could completely. You, yeah. Could you maybe um, give an example of a, of something that's different from the uh, stakeholders around the table, or the survey, or the uh, or the public meeting? You know, mm. what, what's an example yeah. of something you might well, be think, doing? Yeah. Thank you. It's yeah. a really good question, Chuck. So, I mean, the first thing for any municipality is to understand that place exists already, as we've just spoken about. So to acknowledge that and to really acknowledge the complex ecological and cultural life of the place. Now, that doesn't mean um, doing anything other than acknowledging that it exists and it's complex. Um, and drawing on that for, for inspiration, then what that does is uh, immediately allows you to acknowledge the rich and complex ecosystem of the various cultures that exist in a place and set about starting to understand various perspectives. Now that does mean, it might mean a survey for some municipalities and every municipality is different. Some have got excellent online digital platforms, others not so much. Others have much richer woven person-to-person uh, -person networks. Right. And I've found that especially here, which is a region. So right. it's a regional area. It's a completely different approach than a, 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 an, an inner city municipality. Right. Um, the, and there is a deep level of care and a deep level of commitment uh, to serve community, which is really beautiful. And okay. everybody's already got ideas and already got thoughts and, and already has some sense of what needs to be done less, what might be done more, but really everybody is in service to place. And so you're already um, just tapping into that and, and then distilling that information in various ways. Data, yes, data is really important, but understanding 
the quality of interactions, people's sense of trust, belonging, how people make meaning. Those are the intangible cultural concepts which um, are the most challenging to express in, in meaningful ways. Well, sometimes it's as simple as um, conversation. Uh, it takes time and it, it takes also a council that is going to uh, be willing to take that time. Um, doesn't always mean that the funding needs to be more but sometimes it does. Yeah, Chuck, there's a beautiful saying. I first came across it um, through the Black Space Alliance group in the United States, um, but it is, I guess, embodied in many First Nations globally. There's a saying, it's, it's move at the speed of trust. And I find that such a beautiful principle in that it doesn't mean go slow. And, um, and it's fascinating even just watching that play out here when there's deep trust and the people, the local people right. have deep trust, you can get things done really very quickly comparatively um, because they have those established relationships. The people right. I'm working with here have those established trusted relationships. So I think some of those principles are really helpful and yeah, thinking yeah. in many generations, which um, of course, is not always what um, our, our contemporary processes encourage or incentivize. Yeah. In doing this work, one of the most important skills I can practice is deep listening. So just shut up and listen and be curious enough to learn from, not about. So because these cultures, and we are just so incredibly fortunate in Australia, to have this traditional wisdom, then inform with a contemporary spirit what follows. Um, it is complex and it takes time, which means listening. So I think if there's one skill, it's, it's listening and giving voice to others, um, giving voice to others that, that are generally quiet and um, uh, aren't usually the people at the podium. I think it's a great way to uh, transition to our next conversation sometime in the future. Um, you're just, I think, at the beginning of your 15 months. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, wish you, yeah, yeah, so wish you luck with that and we'll... Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you along the way. Great, Chuck. Thank you. So with that, the key notion that we travel no faster than the speed of trust, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of place parts. And we'll see you again next time.